one of the biggest mistakes I see people making, especially newer traders, and, and surprisingly, you know, a lot of times people that have been trading five to 10 years is they're always interested in the stock that already moved. I'll do a webinar and people will say, hey, Brian, what do you think about uh, uh, what's been moving recently? Uh, um, uh, DraftKings. What do you think about DraftKings? That was just up on earnings the other day and it had a huge run. I'll look and I'll say, well, you know, it just rallied 20% in three days. Do you think you're early on this trade? Do you, you know, what's realistic? Do you think up to 20% in three days and you think it's in, by the end of the week, it's going to be up 50%? Sometimes that happens, but that's not what's typical. So we want to go with what's typical. So we ask, where has it come from? Did it expend a lot of energy getting there? And how do you think those people that bought it last week are feeling? We're thinking maybe it's time to you know, lighten our, our exposure a little bit, sell some off. So we want to ask ourselves, where has it come from? Because and, and where can I set my stop based on that? It doesn't mean you can't buy that stock the next morning after it gaps lower, gets back above the VWAP and put your stop 36 cents away. That still might be a great trade, but you've got to realize the opportunity for it to go up, you know, four, five, eight days in a row becomes less likely. The momentum is still there, so exploit it, but you've got to really drill down the shorter term time frames. The other question is where does it have the potential to go before it's likely to encounter a source of supply that might become resistance? So a lot of people say, hey, uh, you know, there's resistance at that point. Here's the thing about resistance and support. We only know after the fact where support and resistance is. We, I look at them and say, that's a level of interest. Uh, you know, the stock's at 18. There was prior support at 20. So I look at that. I don't say there's resistance at 20. To me, the people that say that, you know, you've got to change your thinking because there's nothing to say it will become resistance. Support broken tends to act as resistance. It's not going to every time. Well, you know, so as it gets towards 20, what do I want to do? I'm not just going to sell my stock because it's at a level it's had a problem with before. Instead, maybe I'll take a little bit off and I'll tighten my stop on the rest and really be careful. Otherwise, maybe maybe it goes to 22, 23, 24, 26 before it makes violates those higher lows. So it's always about, you know, find the ideal entry. Don't chase things. And how can you manage risk and control risk along the way? and listen to the message of the market. Don't listen to the analysts. Don't listen to the people on TV. Listen to the message. The message is there. It's clear. It's price action. Only price pays. All the rest of it is just noise, realistically. 